Thanks for joining us once again at the Clive Barker Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to the works and worlds of Clive Barker. This one is episode 135. Are you teasing us? In this episode, we talk about Clive Barker news, a couple of new book releases, and thanks to the good people at Clive Barker's company, Seraphim, and Clive Barker himself, we get to talk about a couple of books that haven't been released yet. Yeah, so here we are. It's uh, We are on episode 135. And I, I did want to apologize for, you know, we this year we've, we have been doing a weekly schedule except for last week. Um, we had sort of a, a, a perfect storm of events that uh, <laughs> yeah. stopped us yeah. from being able to – I mean, we, we almost did it anyway, but we were both kind of stressed out, and, and uh, I think it was better to, to wait a week. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I can say what happened to me was that – Sarah and I bought a house and we were moving. So uh, we were just doing the move ourselves uh, to save some money. And wow, I'll let, you know, I'll tell you, when you're 40, mm-hmm. you're not as strong as you think you are anymore. <laughs> and when you have to carry like a, a big Ikea couch and then another sectional couch and then all this sort of furniture and you have to rent a U-Haul truck and put all that stuff in there. At the end of the day, it's like, oh my God, my muscles feel just like, Rubber bands, you know, it's smashing it's, your hands in the door frame when you're moving stuff out of the door. Yeah, smashing the back <clears throat> of your hands against the door frame, kind of like Larry and Hellraiser. <laughs> right. uh, and getting bruises all over yourself, and something falls on your foot, and yeah. it's it's, yeah. it's 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 fun. It's a lot of fun, and then you get to the new house, and you get to fall down the stairs, and land on both your knees, which <laughs> yeah. <laughs> happened to me but anyway enough of complaining it's it's been great i have a new office it looks freaking amazing i'm is, looking is it put together now do you are you sitting on the yeah. floor no no I, I got the desk i got the desk i got the microphone i got my laptop on here all right i got the cats cats on an ikea futon that's on the other side because this is like my office is now a second bedroom that also has a closet which i'm using to put all my books in a walk-in closet, and it has a, a, a bathroom. So it's kind of like two masters in this house, wow. which is kind of cool. That is cool. Yeah, but, <clears throat> but God, I, I was going to bed exhausted and waking up tired, and I didn't have any time to even, like, um, look at Hellraiser Anthology or the Tonight Again audiobook that we're going to talk about. But uh, well, I had you, listened you, to those before. Them. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I had listened to those, like, a couple weeks ago or a week ago. And so, um, so I'm totally prepared and stoked for this, and right. I hope you guys had a, a, a good couple of weeks. Yeah, and actually, my for my part, uh, I was sort of moving also. I mean, I, I flew down to Washington, and I took Joey with me, and, um, you know, may, partly for a memorial service for my grandmother, but also because they needed help uh, moving all of her stuff. They only right. had, like, three days to move her stuff out of her apartment, um, before the end of the month when her, you know, when that's what she had heard from the people at the, at the apartment complex and everything. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we were, we were moving heavy stuff really fast to, on do- dollies and carts and stuff. And, and I wish that my mom had rented a U-Haul truck, but they just were using a pickup truck. So every day we would do one load to their house and then, you know, that'd be Oh, it. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We got a 15-foot U-Haul truck, and we only used it for yeah. one day. Those are uh, great, actually, man. I, I, that's the yeah. best investment ever. They're like 30 bucks or whatever, and and, uh, and you get it for the whole, you know, for 30 bucks a what? day or whatever. Yeah, it was kind of like that. We also rented a, a cart and a dolly and some uh, some uh, blanket pads to cover the furniture. And they even so sell it, you yeah. boxes. Not that we're there. Not that U-Haul is our sponsor or anything, but it's right. like super helpful. Mm-hmm. We had gotten boxes from uh, cheaper boxes from Amazon, and Sarah brought some boxes from her work. So that oh, was yeah, uh, that helps. How we boxed everything up. So um, yeah, we both had a few things uh, happen and. Uh, but we're back. We're back, yeah. and we got some really cool stuff to talk about today. Well, and, and yeah, and also I think I was a little stressed about trying to because I had you know Joey around me the whole time, and the two things that we're talking about for this episode, the Hellraiser anthology, and tonight again, 
are not appropriate to look at when you've got a five-year-old hanging over no. your shoulder the whole time. <laughs> not age-appropriate, no. 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 Yeah, I mean, and I, and I wanted to compare the audio book to the actual book while I, you know, follow along while listening and everything, so. Sure, sure. Yeah, so, yeah, we, we just thought, you know, nobody's really going to complain if we put this <laughs> off for another week. <laughs> so, no, I mean, if you guys no. are, are, like, really furious, let us know, but I... I think it. I think it's working out okay. It also. It also kind of delays our our uh, uh, duels of blood by another a, a week later than I was expecting. But I don't think anybody really cares if it's at the exact same time as the basketball tournament. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, that's another thing that's coming up. So we're looking forward to the duels of blood too. Yeah. Which was a goal stretch on the Kickstarter. Yeah. So it's it's nice to actually get back into this. We had a little bit of a break, I suppose. Um, in Clive Barker news, oh, the 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 short story, The Departed, uh, which is also called Hermione and the Moon, mm-hmm. is uh, on Dark Screams Four, which is a compilation book, and now you can get it on Kindle Audio, or uh, which is on Audible or MP3 CD. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's cool. I, I I haven't read that story. I mean, I know you have. I think, right? Uh, well, I th- yeah, yeah. And I think that um, did we? I thought we maybe you we maybe you only read a theater ap- adaptation of it. I can't remember. I think we talked about it on one of our episodes. Yeah, it was adapted for theater, right? Exactly. Yeah, um, yeah but Dark Screamers. Uh, it's the fourth uh, installment of this. So. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's, if you haven't read the story, I mean, this is a good chance for you to pick it up and read a bunch of cool fiction. Yeah, and you you posted recently that uh, the Gauntlet Press edition of Everville is available now for pre-order. Uh, they just yeah. recently did the, or I think only just recently, the, the Great and Secret show came out. I think that was delayed for a little while. Uh, it was. I think there's still... They're still shipping some of those uh, Great and Secret Show super limited editions, I think. I I saw something about that a while ago. But, yep, the Dark Regions Press is releasing um, two editions of Clive Barker's Everville, which is being published by Gauntlet Press. So the mailing list of Dark Regions Press, that's where I found out about this. They said, on the borderland between this world and the world of quiddity, the sea of our dreams sits Everville. For years it has lived in ignorance of the gleaming shore on which it lies. But its ignorance is not bliss. Opening the door between worlds, Clive Barker delivers his characters into the heart of a human mystery, into a place of revelation where the forces which have shaped our past and are ready to destroy our future are at work. So uh, this will be published as a signed limited edition with cover art by Clive Barker and in, in black and white interior art by Clive Barker and numerous bonus items. Caitlin R. Kiernan will write an introduction and Josh Boone will write an afterword. So uh, Clive Barker will sign both editions and uh, Caitlin R. Kiernan and Josh Boone will sign the lettered edition. And Caitlin R. Kiernan is a horror author, right? Um. I'm that not familiar sense. with her work. I've just seen the name before, but I've I don't think I've maybe I've read short stories by her, but I don't think I've read. You know, I'm super familiar. Yeah, she's an Irish-born American <laughs> author of science fiction and dark fantasy works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, I mean, that's cool. I, I, if anybody gets one of those, let us know what you think of it. Uh, either the Great and Secret Show or Everville. Which, honestly, if they're just pre-ordering it now, it might be a year or two before that comes out anyway. Right, right. You know how these things go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, typically when I order these things, I forget by the time they come out, I forgot whether I ordered them or not. So yeah. So it's like a, a secret Santa surprise in the mail. That's always fun, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> Who bought um, me this? Oh, thanks, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> From Ryan to Ryan. Yeah. Uh, there's also a Mirror Mirror 2. Uh, available to pre-order via Kickstarter, and it's going to feature some Clyde Barker art in there. Yeah, there's one uh, one painting that's going to be in there. And this, uh, if you go to these these this uh, this company's website, they're they're sort of dedicated to art, um, like narrative. They're a small narrative through artwork. So their books are mainly like comic art and paintings mm-hmm. and sketches and stuff like that. 
And so this is a this is a book that's a compilation of comic art and and sketches and paintings. Um, right. And it has a a Clive Barker painting in it, which you can see on the if you go to the show notes the follow the link the 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 story that we put has that painting for the main image for it. That's right. It's called 2D Cloud. It's a small Minnesotan publisher, and uh, they have a Kickstarter on right now. And I think, let's see how much they have going. $6,170 out of a $20,000 goal, which means they still have uh, some ways to go. They still need to get another $13,000. Aren't they like six um, or seven days in out of the 30, I think? Yeah, they have 22 days to go. Yeah. So there's still enough time to make this happen, and uh, it's a fifty dollar uh, tier for if you want to get a hardcover book of that. Yes. Plus, I yes. think you get other stuff. Where if I was reading it right, it looks like you get like a bunch of books for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get a lot of digital books. You get Alt Comics Magazine Five, Sound of Snow Falling, uh, okay. One Hundred, uh, Mirror Mirror Two. If that's a thirty five level uh, tier. But, uh, yeah, I, I haven't looked uh, too closely to their Kickstarter, but I definitely will. And uh, they have a lot of videos and they have a lot of, like, images and stuff on their Kickstarter page. So uh, check it out. Do you remember when um, Mr. Be Gone uh, audiobook came out? Yes. I was thinking <clears> – <throat> I remember thinking at the time – and probably what I should have been thinking was that, you know, Doug Bradley is a is – a, um, you know, well, uh, he, he's a he's got he's an actor with a broad range, and he's got a you know he's got a really clear uh, clear voice, and and mm-hmm. uh, it would it makes total, total sense to you know. But I think when this came out, my first thought was, well, Pinhead's a demon, and Mister Be Gone or Jackabock Botch is a demon, so you know, I don't know if I imagined him sounding like Pinhead, but we'll see how this goes. And, and yeah, uh, but honestly, when you listen to it, it's amazing. It, it's a really good book. It is. It is really yeah. good. Um, yeah, the the story is obviously. I mean, people out there will have that have read Mister Be Gone. They'll be familiar with the story. But if you're not familiar with the story, the real quick uh, synopsis is that he's a demon that got fished out of hell um, back in medieval times, just before Gutenberg invented the press. And then he, um, you know, he has to make his way around the world. Um, he basically looks like a, a severely burdened person, uh, so so he can get away with his looks being a demon. Mm-hmm. And then he meets another demon that he becomes friends with, and then he goes to mines in Germany, um, where there's a battle between good and evil over you know who gets to pick what gets printed and the new printing press, and it's going to yeah. change the world and all of that. So. But the, actually, the the whole thing is that Jacobach Botch narrates the book in the first person. Uh, plot twist. There's a plot twist there. I'm not going to spoil it. But so yeah, it was great when I uh, listened to uh, Doug Bradley's uh, voice narrating it. Yeah. And I've listened to uh, Doug Bradley <clears throat> narrating other things like uh, Lovecraft stories and stuff like that. That's right. He has a website right where he does that. Mm-hmm. So so Doug Bradley is. Um, the perfect choice to narrate Clive Barker fiction, I think. And he is actually working on a narration for Tonight Again, uh, the erotic uh, poetry and short story book that came out some time ago. Um, so we we had a chance to listen to some of that, and uh, we would like to share our opinions with you. Yeah, I mean, I think... And when I first heard that he was going to do that, I thought, wow, you know, that's that's a that's a brave choice because I think it would be hard to narrate this whole book with a straight face, you know, or, or you know, in in, in earnest, um, because there's some <laughs> yeah. there's there's just some 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 stuff that just kind of makes you blush. I mean, honestly, but uh, but he he did a he did a phenomenal job, I think. I, I thought so too. So we were fortunate enough to get a copy of this from Seraphin. It's mm-hmm. still in uh, development stages. Uh, the version that we got um, was uh, just master uh, uh, mastered uh, MP3s, and some of them have more than one take. I guess they're still working on which ones uh, they're going to pick. Yeah. But yeah, I I thought it was pretty amazing. I had some concerns about uh, the fact that some of these stories have female protagonists. And I was wondering, well, you know, if it's going to be just him narrating the whole thing, how is that going to turn out? 
But as soon as I started listening to it, it, it just went away because yeah. it, it really works. And he's a total performer, you know, and, and the inflections that he gives to certain characters, that he makes different voices sometimes. Yeah. And I thought it was just great. It's, it opens with the, the short story that gives the name to the compilation, the anthology, which is Tonight Again. And then there's also a lot of poetry, and you can you can really appreciate Doug Bradley's uh, acting skills when he's reciting this poetry and all these. Uh, you, you remember there was a story that was about a, uh, a man and a dog, and yes. they're they're two they're, views from a window, I think. Yes, they're yeah. peeping toms. They're looking at a woman who's having like a secret. Um, uh, a, I wouldn't call it a date. I would call it more like a secret affair with like yeah. a butcher. And then it's like you get the idea that the blind man is just talking to himself and the dog is, is and we're, you know, listening to what the dog is thinking. It's kind of like a John and Garfield yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Except, because he, he, he's uh, the, the dog doesn't really hear what the man is saying. Yeah. Or the, or, I mean, no, or the, the man, man doesn't understand doesn't, what the yeah. dog is saying. Yeah. Yeah. But the so uh, that, to what he says. that is so funny, and and yeah. Doug Bradley uh, really comes comes through with all the accents and the voices, and uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty amazing. And there's he, an, there's another one where where he does a southern accent for uh, for this guy in, in kind of this dialect. He does right. It's I think one of the the last ones. Mister Fred Cody professes his love, undying yes. love for his little Sylvia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's funny because, you know, obviously Doug Bradley is British, but uh, from his acting skills and from being in so many movies, ob obviously he can pull a really convincing set of uh, uh, accents. So, and and uh, maybe having lived in the United States for a while now. Yeah, that too, of course, yeah. But um, we – so we can – they told us it's okay. I mean this is still preliminary stuff, so they told us it's okay to share a clip maybe 10 to 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, what what would you think would be the best representation to uh, to put in here? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe that maybe the um, the the one with Sylvia and uh, Mr. Cody. Sure, yeah. sure. Also, I like Crawl, a fable. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a very good, very good story. It almost, I think that's the one where the girl goes into the orchard and she finds the creature. Yeah, is that it? Yes. I think so, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And, it's and, uh, fable. and her that story always struck me as it, it could just be another story in like Aberat or uh, the the Mr. Maximilian Bacchus's traveling circus. It has that feel to it, you know. Um but yeah, I you know, sure, the the one you said sounds good. Okay. Well, yeah, I um we'll of course we'll be editing that in here right now. Crawl. A fable. At the northeast end of the orchard, close to the old stone wall which marked the perimeter of her father's land, was Francesca's tree. It had ceased to bear its annual bounty of purple plums three years ago, and were it not for his daughter's pleas on its behalf, Papa Rufford would doubtless have had one of his three sons chop it down. So, yeah, yeah so... That, that that was pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. There you go, yeah. Doug Bradley. And uh, I don't think we know just yet when this is coming out. No, no, we don't. I, I imagine it'll be pretty soon because this this is. I mean, this is probably ninety eight percent finished. I mean, right. It, it's all done. There's just a few. There's a, like a couple errors and a few t extra takes and stuff, but uh, all they have to do really is just put it together. Mm -hmm. So like you said, there's some stuff in here that uh, it's pretty explicit. Uh, so if, if you're familiar with the book, um, you're probably just going to be like, oh, that's okay with me. But uh, but if you're not familiar with the book, just be be forewarned that, you know, there's some – some really explicit parts in this book because, uh, you know, Clyde Barker doesn't pull back. Uh, whenever Clyde Barker wants to write something, he just goes all the way. And you can tell that from uh, things like uh, a chapter called Men in the Isles of Supermarkets or uh, The Freaks. <laughs> right. <laughs> or um, one about a man who collects pictures of, uh, of penises. It's right. called The Collection. And, uh, yeah, although these are not autobiographical 
but they represent this kind of sensibility that Clyde Barker has uh, in terms of uh, queer sexuality, uh, not necessarily gay sexuality for most of these, but, you know, that also is there, of course. But, uh, yeah, so it's it's really, really cool that they're doing this audiobook with Doug Bradley because I, I really think Doug Bradley is a under underused voice actor as well as a, a brilliant actor in movies. And and the book itself is a really good uh, a really good look at at the nature of you know why are things taboo? Yeah, exactly taboo. That's that's the word that describes you know basically the the, the underlying theme here is just all this breaking of taboos and uh, people who break free of repression, you know, repress sexuality and. Uh, and most of the people who do that in the the stories in this book, they end up achieving some sort of happiness, even if even if they have like a partner or if they're just alone, you know. Yeah, they uh, they at least have some kind of freedom, and and uh, by the end of the stories. Yeah, yeah. Some of them go through a lot of like pain and misery and horrible marriages and uh, uh, bad bedroom activities, but mm-hmm. uh, but at the end, you know, there's always some measure of redemption. Yeah, yeah, and now that I, you not now having heard the, this Doug Bradley version, I don't know that I'd want to hear somebody else reading this. Yeah, I think this is, yeah, this is really good. So I, I if he did it, that's it. I don't think anybody else should do it. It's, it's claimed. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, and Doug Doug Bradley, being a longtime friend of Clive Barker's, I think knows him really well. Uh, knows mm-hmm. his his sensibilities and his his philosophy. Of course. I mean, they started out back in the days of the dog company. So even, it's even been what, before that in, in the school. Yeah, in school, in high school. Yeah. So that's pretty good. And uh, so that, that was our first thing that we're teasing, just mainly because mm-hmm. it's not actually out yet. And the other thing, of course, is the Hellraiser anthology comic. That's right. The one that we announced uh, some time ago. Uh, Seraphin was... Uh, Kind enough to send us a PDF of it, and um, as as uh, I think we may have mentioned this, um, it's supposed to come out uh, this April. Yeah, and April first they said, which I don't know if yeah. that's supposed to be if that's a joke or if it's yeah. real. <laughs> it's not going to be a lie. It's going to be but real. Yeah. It's it's a thing. We saw it, yeah. and and then they're going to uh, promote it. Um, I think they they, uh, they announced it. And we announced it kind of simultaneously um, back when they did so at Stanley's Comic Con Comic K's in Los Angeles. Yeah, Kamikaze, right? Kamikaze, right? Yeah. yeah. So they they announced it that uh, the world of Clive Barker's Hellraiser would be further explored in Hellraiser Anthology, a new graphic novel coming out in 2017 from a talented team of writers and artists, and so. Uh, it's great that we got quoted by the Daily Dead. <laughs> uh, the press release was via Clive Barker cast. I'm looking at the article right now. So, yeah, um, today Clive Barker Seraphine Inc. proudly announced Hellraiser Anthology, an original graphic novel based within the world of Clive Barker's Hellraiser, at a panel at Stanley's L.A. Comic Con. Seraphine Inc., uh, Seraphine's publishing, publishing branch, will be producing the comic in-house and distributing it via Clive Barker's online, online store, RealClyBarker.com, both as a hardcover print edition and as a DRM-free PDF download. So, like, like that, like they said, uh, uh, April first will be the date it'll come out, and then they're going to really uh, announce it more in um, Monster Palooza, I think, which is going to take place a few days later, like uh, six, seven. Seven, seven through nine of April. So, I think uh, Seraphim might be present there. So uh, that's that's something to look forward to. I think that you know now that now even though we have a free PDF of this, I still I I, I want to get the hardcover. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's important. And uh, if you remember some artists that uh, we've mentioned before, like Daniel Serra, mm-hmm. um, he worked on the cover for uh, Barbie Wilde's uh, The Venus Complex, and right. he was also inside Voices of the Damned. He did like a pinup. So he does the, the cover for this one, um, and there's a lot more artists on the inside. It's very similar to if you've seen Hellraiser Bestiary, uh, 
that's kind of the format that they're going for with this one. So it's called Hellraiser Anthology. It's edited by Ben Mears. Mm -hmm. It was lettered and designed by Christian Francis, and it was uh, assistant editor on this was Matt Murray. And uh, the reason why I did the pause is because he writes his name with a period after the Matt. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's Matt, <laughs> period, Murray. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, and cover art was Daniel Serra. And then on the inside, you can see uh, Seraphim Comics president, Clive Barker, vice president, Mark Allen Miller, editor in chief, Ben Mears. So the stories that are going to come out, we're not, I don't think we should spoil the titles or anything, but I can tell you some of the artists that are going to be working in this. Um, it's going to be Daniel Serra, Nick Percival, which uh, who you may remember from the Hellraiser Boom Studios comic books. There's going to be another one called uh, 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 Riley Schmitz, and I found uh, found out more about him. He's uh, ZD Bones Art in Twitter. Mm. So at ZD Bones with two Ds, Z I double D Y Bones. So uh, he does a story that's really interesting. It's uh, it's called. Uh, can we can we say the title of the story? I think so. Okay, so this there's a story that Clyde Barker uh, came up with. It's called Pin Okio. <laughs> right. It's it's <laughs> not one word. It has a dash, so it's Pin Okio. And uh, Riley Schmitz illustrates that one. As I thought, that's just fantastic. It's written in this looks like a children's book, you know, but uh, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, th yeah. There's a really good contrast in that story. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the, these artists, they uh, they do some uh, s some some of the stories in here. Some of them are really small, though. They don't expect them to be too long. Some of them are just one page. Others are a couple of pages. There's a few that have you know that are a little more extensive than that. But uh, yeah. So yeah, and Jim O'Dell is also another artist that that makes a, a story called Vagina Dentata. Um, and Sam Sheeran as well. Sam Sheeran worked for um, the Books of Blood animated comic. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it, I still would be interested to see wh where those are going or if those are going to continue on. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then also uh, the writers are going to be, of course, Christian Francis, Ben Mears, uh, Riley Schmitz, uh, David Ian McKendry, and Rebecca McKendry. These names sound familiar. I think I've, I've Christian Francis, yeah, and um, yeah, and Clyde Barker. So that's oh, and nesting is written by Mark Allen Miller. So there you go. And uh, and for Hellraiser purists, so um, we'll be happy to to know that there's at least a couple stories in in this anthology that center around Frank Cotton. Mm hmm. Yes, there's. Uh, they give us more backstory uh, from the character. Uh, and I just think that the artwork, Danielle Serra's artwork is just amazing. Yeah. And, uh, I think the, the, the graphic design inside the comic book is pretty cool. They, they have this, uh, the, the opening story has these, uh, narration, uh, squares in, in the panels that are written in this sort of like, uh, typewriter type, but it's just yeah. so cool. And, and yeah. It reminds yeah. me a lot of the, the old, nineties uh, Hellraiser comics. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because they have they follow this sort of anthology format where you have several stories inside the same book. Was that John Bolton artwork was kind of like that the when he yeah. did the the artwork for Hellraiser. Mhm. Mm absolutely. Yeah, I have one of those pages. It's pretty cool. So, uh yeah, if you're a Hellraiser fan, these stories go to places that we've never seen them go before and they they take risks, serious risks with these stories. They push the envelope in terms of, uh, you know, sexuality and nudity and stuff like that. Stuff that maybe mainstream comic publishers can't put on their comics or, or you know, because uh, obviously uh, some, some things are gruesome. Uh, but for Hellraiser fans, you guys are going to love this stuff, really. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was I was kind of blown away by by them, and I'm looking forward to. I guess April first is going to come up here pretty quick. Yeah, there's a lot of pinups in here. Some of them were drawn by fans. If you can remember, there was a kind of a open submission period for uh, people to send Hellraiser style pinups to be uh, selected and put into this Hellraiser anthology. So at the end, you do have some um, some fan work um, yeah. that published in here as well. 
and uh, one really neat thing, and I don't remember if this was announced or not, but uh, the the uh, the cover page says Volume One on it, so kind of implying that there's going to be more, uh, which I really appreciate. Yeah, yeah, uh, I hope so. I hope that they would do more because. If this is successful, then yeah, absolutely, because this will be coming straight from Clive Barker, and that's never a bad thing, right? That's yeah. always a good thing yeah. <laughs> to have stuff like this done in-house because for Hellraiser fans, I think that a lot of people out there were going through this period. It's almost like a kind of a Hellraiser recession in a way. Yeah. It's like, oh, God, it's like all these sequels are terrible, and then – we they go on for like five years without coming up with anything, and then there's like some comic books, but it, it's comic almost, books are now done. It's yeah, it's almost a reaction to the way Hellraiser's been watered down so badly in the in the movies. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Boom Studios comics were were cool, but you know, I personally, I'm just speaking on on my own opinion. I I think some of them were good. They went some really fun places, but others other stories were just like eh, I just. I just wish they had done something a little different, like yeah. like the ending with that story with the fight between several la- levels of hell and then the Cenobite hell and then the demon hell. I, I just thought they lost its way a little bit, but um, I think until but, Bestiary came out, and then and then it started yeah. to really. But then that was it; it was over. Yeah, it was just six issues of Bestiary, which yeah. uh, I was enjoying that more than the regular series, to be honest. Yeah. So I'm glad to see them return to the anthology format. The, the thing uh, that I felt with the the Boom series was that it was – it's like when, when you have one of those contests where somebody starts you know, a, a story and then the next person has to take over and then the next yes. person has to take over. And it felt kind of felt like the Hellraiser comic was doing that. And that there were there were threads that one person would start and the other person wasn't in, the next person wasn't interested in, and they would take the story into a different direction that maybe they they hadn't planned at the beginning. Yeah. And uh, and so the story kind of went on this sort of wild narrative that got crazier and crazier as it went along until <laughs> they had to kind of just stop and do bestiary, which was more like what we're what we're talking about here. It was more little individual stories. Yeah, I think that this anthology format really suits Hellraiser because Hellraiser's stories are these little Faustian stories and uh, we don't need them to be like an epic like 10 issue series of, you know, I, I guess they can do it, but I don't know. I think that there's also there's also a danger of of short stories, short Hellraiser stories becoming too repetitive in, sor- in, this, in the the way that they go by, you know, like, yeah. oh, okay, so this guy finds a box, he opens it, Cenobites appear, twist ending, blah, blah, blah. But uh, in this one, I thought they were all very, very good. They were all very good. They all had something to say or something to add to the mythology. And I think that's what's important. Back in the 90s, Clive Barker was concerned that the comics were starting to go that direction so we, that's when he came up with the idea of the harrowers oh i see yeah yeah he had said that you know it seems like it's just somebody opens the box and then they go to hell and that keeps happening over and over again he says in you know in his idea comic books should have heroes and so you know that's that's where the the harrowers came in that's also kind of what he wanted to do with Nightbreed, right? Like the continuation of Nightbreed. He wanted them to become almost like these X-Men. Yeah, yeah. They would have their own sort of – yeah, that that would be cool. Uh, and that I, would have been fun. Yeah, I think it could have – I think it still could happen that way. Um, Sure, if they ever come up with Nightbreed too. yeah. Yeah, or even just comics, you know. Yeah. They, I mean, they, right. they, at least by the end of the Boom comics, they had they did have a mansion that they all were going to live in. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, that ending. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, the the last couple of issues were a little like weird, but. Uh, yeah. I think it's great. I think everybody should get one. Any Hellraiser fan, any Clive Barker fan, <laughs> any comics fan. Yeah. But, you know, we're not going to tell you not to get it, obviously. Yeah. But uh, in this case, it's really because I think it's really good. Like I said, I think the stories are very interesting to read. They have some backstory in there for, like, Hellraiser purists, like you said, Ryan. Well, I, and, think, you, I think if we didn't like it, you could kind of decode, 
you know, mm-hmm. from our from how we talk about it, we would say, oh, it went in some interesting directions. <laughs> you know, yeah, absolutely. We, we, we would be polite and, uh, and noncommittal if we didn't like it. But, yeah. yeah, I think this one is awesome. I'm really excited about it. And just the amount of pinups they added at the end, they're just amazing. Mm-hmm. Some of them are a little more funny than others. Like there's one with Pinhead uh, covered in uh, in hors d'oeuvres and his pins. Yeah, right. And he's, right. he's offering pins at a party. Yeah. He's got hors d'oeuvres, madame. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's really cool. Some Cenobites that people have created. Like there's a particular piece that I thought was really striking by Emil Melmoth. He made this, uh, this pinup with two... Cenobites, two Siamese Cenobites with no arms. It's just amazing. I mean, the, the stuff, it's its just so creative. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and really kind of shocking and disturbing uh, and cool. Yeah, and the last story, too. The last story with Pinhead is, is pretty amazing. I think it's called uh, What We Are, written by Christian Francis. So yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, and that, that's, that's one of the ones that kind of centers around Frank. Or yeah, and gives also, a little a little background. Yeah, and um, what? Oh, my cat is kind of asking for dinner. Uh, okay, <laughs> buddy. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot of cool stuff in here. There's um, there's uh, definitely you see what the Cenobites do in their daily lives. You see more backstory from Frank. Um, it's yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's it's amazing. Yeah. And all the artwork is just brilliant. It's just absolutely brilliant. And of course, Pinocchio, the story by Clive Barker. It's yeah. I, I would buy it just for the standalone story because it's so good. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's. Uh, I think it's. A, there's a little comedy in that one too. There is a little bit. Yeah, yeah. obviously. It's. What if Geppetto had you know, made his little uh, doll. Um, and it was a little different. And he, he and his customers were also um, some pretty weird people. But uh, I'm not going to spoil it. You guys, you guys should get it and read it. So look out for Hellraiser anthology in April. Yeah, yeah. And um, go to Monster Palooza because they're going to be they're going to be selling it there. I think. Oh, you have uh, you have Mad Monster Party coming up, right? In in Arizona, are you going to be able to make it to that? I don't know. I, yeah, I saw the uh, announcement for it, but uh, I, to be honest, I haven't really looked up. Uh, I think Doug Bradley is going to be there. Oh man! Uh, because they announced the announcement a few days ago on their page was that mm-hmm. we're coming to Arizona and we have such sites to show you. Oh, you, so, should, get, you should get your um, your Scarlet Box signed. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, I think I need to to seriously consider that. And uh, and try to make it to that uh, monster party, mad monster party, Phoenix. So uh, let me know if you guys are going there, and maybe you know, maybe we can meet and hang out, and uh, yeah, and 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 talk about Hellraiser stuff. So that that should be cool. The um, so what stuff we've got coming up? Uh, you've been working on your comprehensive Nightbreed article that I think sort of took a break right for the the uh, the move. Yeah. Oh no! You finished that one. I'm sorry. I finished I that thinking, one. I was yeah. thinking of something else. Yeah, you, you, you were thinking of the road to Scarlet Gospels. Yes, the road which... to Scarlet Gospels. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah your yeah. comprehensive Nightbreed article is up, and it's been getting a lot of praise actually from um, from from people at Seraphim. They've been sharing it out on Facebook, uh, Clive Barker yeah. through Clive Barker's Facebook page and and t- yeah. Twitter, I think too. They tweeted it too. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty pretty cool of them. And a lot of other people have been doing that. Um, so I'm very happy that something that I wrote in a couple of days, kind of like on a on kind of a a whim, I was like, hey, you know what? It's Nightbreed is turning 27, so maybe I should write something about it because I I feel like you and I were in a, a very unique position where we we were part of Occupy Midian and we're the Clyde Barker podcast and we know a lot of stuff that most people don't know. And so, yeah, I started writing that and gosh, I'm so tired. Even talking makes me tired. <laughs> yeah. But but uh, so I, I didn't sleep that night. I was just writing that all, all night long and I posted it on the blog and then I kept I kept fiddling it with it a little bit, adding like little links and little videos and stuff, yeah. and 
like the panel with Clive Barker when we saw it, the screening at the Crest Theater in, in Westwood in Los Angeles and stuff like that. And uh, pictures from when uh, Nightbreed got the Saturn Award for the best Blu-ray. And and you linked on there, I think you you found the link right from that when Entertainment Weekly interviewed me? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad because I lost that, and I, you know, and I now now something's come up where I wanted to send that to somebody. So now I can, you know, now thanks to this article, I can I can send it. Yeah, well, that's cool. Um, so that was fun. It was a little like, you know, when when you get caught up in something and and it's you start working on it, and nothing else matters until that thing is done. That's Which, kind of what this this article was like. Yeah, which is kind of that's kind of how it felt being in Occupy Midian too at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was just this sort of whirlwind of of uh, activity. Yeah, yeah, people joining actors, and then we were interviewing people and stuff like that, which you will all get to read on the first volume uh, of our interview book. Yeah, yeah. So that so that's cool, and and. Uh, I guess speaking of our interview book, I just wanted to kind of give a little bit of a, an update from Kickstarter. So mm -hmm. we we only just a few days ago got the money um, from Kickstarter. So so things are start have started going into motion. I've upgraded our our account so that you know so that we can get the developer, and I've applied for a developer account with and gotten a developer account with Apple so that I can make the iOS one uh, app and then. Once that's submitted, then I can uh, do it all over again with Google and, and do the, the uh, Android. The Android. Yeah. Right, app. right. We were working on the images for the, the app, the yeah. little icons and stuff yes. for that the other day. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I put in some questions about those, and they haven't responded yet about that. So, but, you know, all I need is, is just for them to answer a question, and then I can, you know, upload those pictures to them and hit submit. And mm -hmm. then um, what else have we – oh, yeah, so we can actually, you know, now that once we've finished recording today, I think we can start talking about uh, expediting things and, and shipping out the stuff that's not uh, not the T-shirts or the books because those, you know, there, there's more to do with those. Right. Uh, but everything else, all of the stuff that Yeah, posters. Yeah, all the stuff that was donated to us or part of collections or, you know, those things, those things we can all, we can, if we get start getting our shipping materials we can just start sending those things out right you know yeah. right away and we also started doing the the stretch goals like we've done the masters of horror uh Eccles tale and yeah. we're going to work on the valerie on the stairs probably today after this but yeah uh, yeah and that'll come out in in a week or so and like ryan said we're going to work on the duels of blood for another week or so yeah um right so next weekend as we're recording this next weekend we'll start recording the or no two weeks from now we'll start recording <laughs> uh valerie or not uh, gosh two weeks from now we'll start recording for clive barker's abcs of horror and um a through z a through <laughs> z of horror yeah we're gonna do <laughs> this is confusing we're gonna talk about the first three letters a b and c of Clive okay, gotcha. Barker's A through Z of Horror, and we'll talk about the book and the TV show, and uh -huh. we'll also talk about round one of the Duels of Blood. So that's there's going to be a lot of prep work for that. Yeah. You so, know what? I will upload a few things to YouTube because this show has never had a proper release. So I guess maybe we can just put it up for temporarily. Or you know. just put a password on it that we share out to, to our yeah. listeners. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. So that way only our listeners can watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and um, yeah, because, I mean, come on, it, there's no harm doing that. This was a BBC program, but they never really released it, to my knowledge. So right. the only way that this show has been uh, continuing to be seen by people is through bootleg DVDs. Yeah, and I have a bootleg TV DVD, and it looks horrible. It looks like It looks like somebody pointed a VHS camera at their TV. And recorded it that way. Oh, and so, okay. And, and the sound is really quiet, and, and uh, I try to watch it, and I just start losing interest or fall asleep or whatever, because it's just, you have to strain really hard to, to see and hear what's going oh, on. That's too it. bad. I'll get yeah. you a better copy. I think I have a copy that has, like, VHS quality, so. Oh, that'll be good. I'll start uploading that to our BarkerCast channel, or another dummy channel, just so we don't get a copyright strike. But, <laughs> right. Uh, 
Yeah. 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 Or, or we could do Vimeo because they don't seem to care. Yeah. And uh, The Great Unknown, uh, The First Adventure of Harry Damore. I think that's the full title. Yeah, we'll be doing that coming up here soon also. Yeah, yeah, if if we have permission. But I think we already talked to someone and they said, well, if that was out there, you know, if it's public and, yeah. uh, you know, some people already have copies and are selling them, then, you know, I guess you guys can do it. So Yes and no. I mean, I don't think that this was – I don't think that this is widely available. I think that, uh, right. you know, I think you, you just – it just was dumb luck that you happened to look, you know, when we were talking yeah. to David in our last episode about, about – uh, about certainly yeah harry demore the last illusion yeah yeah and the last illusion and then all of a sudden it's like oh hey that wasn't our last episode that was the one before that i think and yes. you, and you just happen to look on ebay like oh my god there's a there's a script for the great unknown and, and autographed by clive barker so yeah. that was that was an interesting find that i don't think i'd ever seen before so so someone we, already snatched it and someone already sold it and all that stuff so you know so we're squeezing it, you know, that into into our schedule just because it's cool. It is. It is very yes. cool. Yeah. The the great unknown. I've been reading the script and I was having a lot of fun just making the little movie in my head, you know? Mm. Like like when when you uh which is which is kind of like the way I read Ply Barker books is sometimes I'm not even reading the words. It's just like I, I'm reading it, but it's like I'm already making the little movie in the back of my mind and that's yeah. what I'm I'm looking at, you know? So it's kind of weird, but uh, – and this one, I was trying to imagine it as a movie, and I'm reading the script, and I'm trying to translate it in my mind, like create the scenes and imagine how they would look like, you know, and play some music in the background, you know, play some uh, some some film music on Spotify, and I'm like, all right, all right, yeah, that would be cool. So <laughs> Simon Boswell. Yeah, it's kind of like the thing I like to do. I like to immerse myself when I'm reading something. I put some music on, and I like to like put the lights down low and just – try to visualize it in my mind and, and make the little movie in my mind. Um, and I've done that with this script and I thought it would have been a really awesome movie if it, if it had like, you know, the budget to be made and stuff like that. So, well, and, and now I'm looking forward to it. I just, I'm only just caught up to, to this episode. I haven't started reading that yet. Yeah. There's some really weird names though, throughout the whole story. There's some oh, really right. complicated names and complicated mythologies in some, in a sense, I thought that, that's kind of like a little fault. Like you remember John Carter of Mars, the movie when it came yes. out. Yeah. It was yeah. it was a little hard to keep track of all the names because they were all like these weird Martian names and stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was the only thing I thought would have been a little confusing because there's several names that it's like they're tongue twisters, you know. But that John uh, Carter movie was what, totally bombed, right? It bombed, but I think it's not because it's a bad movie. Yeah, because I, I, I watched it, was cool. it. I thought it was a decent. It was a decent movie. Yeah, it was just poorly marketed. You know. Uh, yeah. Uh, as usual, blah, Hollywood. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's funny. People, it's like some some movies they want to get behind, and some movies they just want to, you know, make it harder for them. Uh huh. Anyway, so uh, yeah, stay tuned for our next episode. Uh, it, and our next uh, podcast episode is probably going to be a commentary track yeah. for Valerie on the Stairs. And then The Great and, Unknown, and then we'll start up on the Duels of Blood and and uh, and ABCs, a, a through Z of horror. Letters A, B, and C. Yeah, letters so, A, B, and C. <laughs> Um, and yes, that's it for this episode, I guess. Uh, you know, keep we'll keep you updated about Hellraiser Anthology and uh, and any news of the audiobook for tonight again as it comes to us from Seraphin. So uh, stay tuned and keep listening to us. And this podcast, having no beginning, will have no end. You can find the show notes for this page and lots of Clive Barker news and features at www.clivebarkercast.com. Leave comments there or get them directly into the podcast by clicking the Send Voicemail tab on the right. Please follow us on Twitter at BarkerCast or at Occupy Midian. Like us on Facebook and join the Occupy Midian Facebook group. You can listen on the site or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Libsyn, TuneIn, PocketCast, Google Play, and DoubleTwist. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Please take a couple of minutes to leave us a review on iTunes. It means the world to us and helps us spread the word about Clive Barker. 
The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial fan site and podcast that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Films. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Thanks for listening.